Hey everyone, it's Heather the Hygienist here with you from Simply Silver Mouthwash and we're going to be discussing the root cause of autoimmune disease through fluoride, mercury fillings, and root canals. I don't know how many of you actually got to see the documentary before it was taken off of Netflix called Root Cause. It had to do with the root cause of disease through getting root canals done. Unfortunately, I didn't get an opportunity to watch it, but I am so glad that this is finally coming to the forefront because people really need to start taking their mouth into consideration when it comes to their overall health. I would like to ask everyone how many commercial oral care products you are currently using. The number one mouthwash on the market today is Listerine and um, that actually I personally call cancer in a bottle because if you look at the ingredients in it, um, there are things that are in here that are actually banned in other countries like the dyes that they use. It has something called Poloxmer 407, which I hope people will really start looking into their labels and not purchase anything that contains Poloxmer 407 because that is actually linked to cancer. It really messes with your, your horm hormones. Um, most of your commercial products contain alcohol, which in Listerine specifically, it's 27% alcohol, which really dries out the mucous membranes in your mouth, and it can cause actually throat and mouth cancer because how it's disrupting the pH. It also has um, sodium saccharin in there, which is also a known carcinogen, um, methyl sacrolate, which actually one teaspoon of that in its pure form would kill somebody. So you can kind of see why I jokingly call it cancer in a bottle because you have to realize that whatever you stick into your mouth is going to go into your bloodstream because it's the most vascular area of your whole body. That's why nitroglycerin works so well because it bypasses your GI tract and it goes directly into your bloodstream. So think about what you're putting into your mouth how many times a day. The other um, mouthwash that is really popular out there is the Crest Pro Health. This one has acetylperidium chloride in it which is also used in pesticide. So again, you are putting something into the most vascular area of your whole body and there is zero testing on how this can affect your overall health over years. So these are ingredients that you really want to stay away from. Of course, everyone's heard of fluoride. Fluoride has been around forever. The um, original patent on fluoride, which most people may not be aware of, is that it was for a pesticide. The FDA did not come into existence until 1938. Everything prior to that was really grafted in or grandfathered in, I should say. Um, so sodium fluoride has been around for such a long time. Um, it is actually a labeled poison. So when, when someone tells me I'm being a conspiracy theorist, I just say, no, I'm a label reader. Because right here, um, if you can see how the... Um, Marking, this is what used to be the skull and crossbones that you could find on bottles, but they changed the label a little bit. So this is actually a label poison, and I actually purchased this off of Amazon. So you can see for yourself that sodium fluoride is a label poison, and that is why on the back of your toothpaste, it says harmful of swallowed contact poison control. So I'm not, you know, trying to um, scare anybody. I'm just trying to educate people for them to be their own um, label readers, their own um, advocate for health, because it's really important that you are aware of what goes into your body. Also, people tend to think that um, fluoride is uh, necessary for keeping your teeth strong. It really isn't. It actually does more harm than good. Um, you know, Hitler actually used it in the concentration camps because what it actually does to your brain is it makes you docile. That's why it's in Prozac, okay? It's in other drugs, other um, 
antibiotics. It affects your pineal gland. It actually calcifies it. So these are things that you really um, need to be considering when you're investigating the root cause of disease. What things are you using every single day? It's also not an essential nutrient. You know, people think, oh, well, I, I have to have it. It's an essential nutrient. It is not. It's actually a derivative of fluorine, which is one of the most reactive substances known to man. So the fluoride that's added in your water is not what we would call the naturally occurring kind, but it's the fluorosilicidic acid, which is actually the uh, hazardous waste from phosphate fertilizer plants. So, um, you know, that is something that if they did not dump into our water supply would have to be labeled as hazardous waste. Um, also, I think the word supplement is misleading because it makes it sound like it's something that you need like calcium or, or another nutrient, but it is not. And also you can investigate how fluoride supplements have actually never been approved by the FDA as safe or effective. From Dr. Dean Burke, he is the, uh, was a doctor from the National Cancer Institute. This is a quote, in point of fact, Fluoride causes more human cancer death and causes it faster than any other chemical. So fluoride gets stored in your bones. Most people don't realize that. That's why it's actually linked to bone cancer. Um, also, it's been admitted that it can cause brain damage. Uh, Harvard came out with a study several years ago talking about that. Of course, they've tried to kind of backpedal and say, oh, no, that's really not true. But it does, in fact, affect your brain. That's why it is in Prozac. So it definitely has ramifications as to how it affects your, your other organs. Fluoride toxicity. Um, this is actually from a government website that I got. It's the acute effects, uh, nausea, vomiting, hypocalcemia, um, convulsions can lead to death. Okay, so this is, you know, you, you eat an entire tube of toothpaste, you're dead. But the chronic effects dental fluorosis because your teeth are the windows to your bones so if you have fluorosis of the teeth think about what's happening in your skeletal system um, hypersensitivity reactions affects your kidneys can cause muscle spasms birth defects and cancer okay um, a study published in uh, neurologia showed that the prolonged ingestion of fluoride may cause significant damage to health and particularly to the nervous system Okay, so again, what you stick into your body is going to affect your overall health. There are um, only 11 countries in the world that have more than 50% of their population even drinking fluoridated water. So it, it is not something that really needs to be in the water at all. It's a drug. It's classified as a drug. There's no way to regulate how much somebody can even drink. Why on earth would you be putting hazardous waste into the water? It's not beneficial. So people really need to stand up in their communities and tell their local governments that that's not something that they even want in their water supply. According to the World Health Organization, there is no discernible difference in tooth decay between developed countries that fluoridate their water and those that do not. The decline in tooth decay over the last 60 years is often attributed to fluoridated water, but it also has happened in all developed countries, most of which do not fluoridate their water. The CDC fails to mention that tooth decay rates have precipitously declined in all Western countries, regardless of whether or not the water was fluoridated. Here I have a picture of what actual fluorosis looks like. So this is mild. Okay, where you can kind of see some white specks on the teeth here. Look at how chalky it looks in the moderate. And then look at the severe. This is really bad fluorosis. Okay, this is extreme modeling of the enamel. Your teeth, by the time you are six years old, are already developed. So to even think that drinking fluoridated water would have any effect on developing teeth after the age of six years old is worthless anyways because it's not going to happen. Um, people think that, oh, I have to have fluoride because if not, I'm going to get a cavity, but that is not really effective. How you get a cavity is mainly your diet. 
constant overabundance of the complex carbs and concentrated sugars. So every time you eat, your saliva is naturally buffering the acids. But the processed foods take a lot longer to digest, which prolongs that acid condition in your mouth. And your teeth are going through always a mineralization, demineralization process. Okay, so um, if you're saliva drops below a 5.5, that is really when decay is going to start working on your teeth. Plaque, which is the germs and bacteria, that's part of everyone's saliva by the way, plus sugar, which even ketchup has sugar in it. Those two things are forming an acid. So it's what we eat, it's what we drink, it's um, you know not having the correct um, balance of, of foods, of drinks, the number one cause of decay is really soda. Soda has a pH of 2.5. Battery acid is a 1. Soda is a 2.5. So if you actually were to think of your body as having a zipper from your neck down and to open up your body, put your organs in a vat of 2.5 because that's what soda does. What do you think is going to happen to your organs? Okay, that is when disease comes in, is when your body is staying in an acidic state for too long. It takes three days for your body to come back to a natural pH of seven from one soda. So I would encourage you to maybe, um, maybe try some kombucha. Kombucha is a fermented tea. Um, yes, it's an acquired taste, but um, you can actually... If you do like it, you can make it yourself. My family and I did it for years. We, we turned kombucha into kombucha soda. So we live in Florida. We like something cold and fizzy when it's really hot, which is like most of the time here. Um, so try kombucha. Um, see if it's something that you can get used to. It is slightly acidic, but actually when you drink it, it's more alkaline to your body. So again, try and make changes where you can. Again, change your diet. Your teeth can absolutely be remineralized. You want to um, get a good electric toothbrush. Um, I actually am an ambassador for Burst Electric Toothbrush. I absolutely love their toothbrushes, and I can see about putting up the code that you could save 40% off a really good electric toothbrush. It's normally $70, but with the code, it's $40. So every three months, they send you a replacement head for 6 bucks, which you can't beat that. I love the bristles. It's super soft. It doesn't feel like a jackhammer going off in your head. But you really need to invest in some good equipment. You need a good electric your toothbrush wait 30 minutes after you eat because again your saliva the way it's designed is to um, bathe your teeth and and try and remineralize it on its own so you don't want to disrupt that process you absolutely have to floss the teeth that you want to keep um, no getting around that a water pick is a great aid but again it does not replace flossing um, my favorite water pick is the hydrofloss because it has an ionic charge so that's already killing bacteria that's why I really like that vitamin D is essential because like I said previously your teeth are the windows to your bones so making sure that you have vitamin D, fish oil, um, black walnut hull, which is found in my mouthwash actually, bone broth, organ meats, and even Kerrygold butter is uh, a great thing that you can add into your diet because it's loaded with all kinds of natural minerals. So how you get, a de how you get um, tooth decay is sometimes you can get those white spots, which are just signs of decalcification, but your teeth have enamel on them. You will never feel a cavity when it's in the enamel. That's why you never want to wait till something hurts because by the time it hurts, it's it's too late. Instead of it being a $200 filling, it's a $2,000 problem. So um, you have these stages. So it starts out in the enamel. This is when you can really remineralize. Then it gets into the dentin, which is the inner part of the tooth. Once it gets into the blood supply, that's when you start to get a, a real serious toothache. Um, an abscess can form, and then either you have to have the tooth pulled, or um, you know, conventional dentistry would say root canal, but I would never ever re recommend that at all. So here I have an X-ray. Um, tooth looks good from the chewing surface. This is called the occlusal surface. Here is an X-ray, and this radiolucent or dark area that you see here, this is the cavity. 
okay? Um, you can take an instrument and get in right through the side. So this is where it's been prepped and then they're going to, to fill that in. But again, you never want to wait till you feel a cavity. Uh, it used to be that they would fill cavities with mercury or silver fillings, but thank God they don't uh, really use that material anymore. Um, you know, mercury goes back all the way to ancient times. The word amalgam in Latin actually means alloy of mercury. It was even known back then to... Um, have it produce illness, derangement, and tremors. In fact, mad as a hatter was a term that was given to people that made men's hats in the 1800s. They used mercuric nitrate, which poisoned them, making them go mad. So the U.S. Public Health Service banned it in the felting industry in 1941. Um, actually, the use of dental or mercury fillings in um, came about from Europe in the 1830s. Dentists were aware of mercury's toxicity uh, and objected to its use. They actually said, oh, we're not going to use it again in 1845, but the only alternative was gold. And of course, because of cost, mercury became the poor man's substitute. So mercury in fillings has proven to be the largest source of mercury in wastewater. So they've actually tried to um, have a treaty. 140 nations have signed it saying they're not going to use mercury anymore for fillings. Um, the reason why they're called mercury fillings really instead of amalgams is because they are mainly mercury. They are containing other ingredients like silver, tin, copper, and zinc, but um, it's really not a silver filling. It's a mercury filling. And according to the government, there are no safe levels of mercury. Mercury in any form is poisonous. Mercury toxicity affects your brain, your GI system, your, your kidneys. Poisoning can result from mercury vapor inhalation, mercury ingestion, mercury injection, and absorption of mercury through the skin. Okay, so it's one of the five most toxic substances known to man. I don't know how anyone can say it's toxic if a uh, old thermometer were to break on a hospital floor and mercury came out, they'd have to have the hazmat come down, shut down the entire floor just to clean that up. So please tell me how it's safe being inside of your mouth so close to your brain. It isn't. Every time you're chewing, um, you're drinking, you're having mercury vapor be released into your system. So it's really important to um, make sure that you are eliminating mercury from your body. In fact, you were actually um, supposed to be warned prior to having any mercury fillings placed, which most people were not given disclosures. Um, but thankfully, like I said, it's not something that they typically use very much anymore. But just to show you, mercury fillings release as much as 15 micrograms of mercury per day. Okay, 10 micrograms per day's average. So if you were to put that into perspective, eating mercury-tainted seafood can expose you to about 2.3 micrograms per day. That alone was enough for scientists to call a worldwide warning in 2006. You can also see on the left-hand side, this is a picture of an old amalgam filling. Okay, see how the margins are kind of leaking and dark and it becomes tarnished? Nowadays, we use a real pretty white composite material, which is way safer. Mercury is especially risky for the following groups. Children, women of childbearing age or breastfeeding infants, people with kidney problems, um, obviously people that have pre-existing neurological problems, um, dental professionals, people with hypersensitivities or allergies. Um, I know when I was pregnant with my twins, um, I had uh, all kinds of, of problems with the pregnancy and then after they were born, one of my daughters actually tested positive for, um, for heavy metals and she was really, she'd never been vaccinated and it was because of all that I had been exposed to. So both of the girls went through a, um, a detox. To this day, I still actually detox myself once a week to try and keep those levels from building up in my own system. Here's some signs of mercury toxicity, nervousness or anxiety, irritability or mood changes, 
numbness, memory problems, depression, tremors, brain fog, and thyroid dysfunction, Hashimoto's disease. Here we are seeing some autoimmune problems from mercury. And again, think about the fluoride that we talked about, how that affects your brain, how it can um, you know, affect your endocrine system with the things that we're putting into our mouth. So these are unfortunately things that your medical doctor doesn't typically ask you, oh, well, do you have mercury fillings in your mouth? Are you using fluoride every single day? So again, being an informed consumer is so important. A lot of times you can even get a metallic taste in your mouth, um, you know, feeling nauseous or vomiting, difficult breathing, changes in your vision, hearing, or speech, feeling uncoordinated, difficulty walking, standing straight, and difficulty breathing. Um, this one I don't have uh, scheduled to actually play, but you can go on YouTube and Dr. Oz had a really good um just a couple minutes where he was interviewing this biological dentist <clears throat> and showing you the effects of toxicity through mercury. So if you get a chance, go to YouTube and check out the video. Um, also root canals. Again, this is <clears throat> something that I know is very controversial. Um, I've been a dental hygienist for 25 years. I'm really coming out against the ADA. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I say that, you really need to do your research on root canals because there is no way that you can possibly make that root canal too sterile. In fact, Dr. Weston A. Price, he's kind of the guru um, way back in the day of talking about root canals and how it affected your overall health. He did some groundbreaking work on focal infection, which is the relationship between a tooth that has a root canal and your overall health, how it can cause disease. <clears throat> he believed that there was a link between root canal treated teeth and disease and found that there were endotoxins and pathogenic bacteria in 100% of root canal teeth. So this bacteria will stimulate an inflammatory response in your body, and it does travel through your body. So here's a picture of the inside of a tooth, and this just has, you can just see two chambers here. So when they go in and they do a root canal, they are just addressing these canals. But the problem is, you have over 3,000 accessory canals to every single tooth. So it's impossible to remove all of the bacteria. And just so you know how they disinfect it, is they squirt bleach in your tooth. That's how they clean it, okay? And that will only remove 44% of the bacteria. It does not and cannot kill 100% of the bacteria in there. So this is an interesting meridian chart. Um, you, again, your teeth are linked to organs in your body. So sometimes people that have a specific disease, they need to look up the meridian chart and see what it is, which tooth it is that it is actually linked to. So you, you can go online and find meridian charts of teeth and do your own research on that. But root canals have also been linked to things like heart disease, kidney disease, arthritis, joint, rheumatic diseases, even ALS and MS, breast cancer, lupus, um, again, thyroid disease, especially if your symptoms began after your treatment. So this is something that most people are really not aware of. The dentists that do speak out against the safety of root canals, they say that there's no way to remove all of the dead tissue from the tooth. You cannot sterilize it. And that the raw the materials used to fill the hollowed out tooth leak and cause problems downstream. But again, your, your American Dental Association that has an entire career based on um, one section of dentistry, they're going to disagree with you. So be an informed consumer. Do your own research on it. In fact, you can go to Mercola.com, and I really like his site. I respect him because he's an actual MD. He does a lot of research on things. You can look up almost anything in his um, archives. He really has done a lot of good research on this. So you can type in root canals on Mercola.com and, and read about that for yourself again. Um, but like I was discussing with the bleach, it only removes 44% of that bacteria. So that's why, you know, 
I can't even begin to tell you how many times in my 25 years of doing this I see root canals fail. Just give it time. You know, the ADA says, oh, well, it's a successful root canal if it lasts you eight years. Well, that's what they're basing the research on. So I guarantee you, you're going to put all of this money, okay, because the root canal is what? $1,200. The crown is another $1,200. At some point, you're going to lose that tooth. Chances are. So there are other options that I'm going to talk about here shortly that you can think about doing. Um, again, root canal is linked to things like uh, even breast cancer, um, hardening of the arteries, Alzheimer's, uh, diabetes, poor blood sugar control, and even oral cancer. So <laughs> I know so many times my patients will get so freaked out. Oh my gosh, I have an infected tooth. I have to get a root canal. You know, I know you get pressured when you're in the chair. We have white coats on. It can be a little bit intimidating, but I do want to encourage you to, first of all, just take control of your health, okay? Determine your goals for your teeth, hopefully, hopefully is to keep your teeth your whole life. Um, that's why they were given to you. They're meant to last. Ask a lot of questions and then find out which option for tooth replacement works for you. This is a dental bridge. So this person has two missing teeth here. Now, some people don't like this option because you have to prep the tooth in front and behind in order to secure this bridge, but it is something that's fixed, so it's not going to come out, unlike a denture, okay? This is a partial denture. So yes, it is a less expensive option, and especially if you have many teeth that you're trying to replace, but it is something that's removable. It might move a little when you're walking, or I'm sorry, talking, um, you know, chewing, you're going to feel it. So that is an option though. And then lastly, what I would recommend would be your zirconia implant. The reason why I do not recommend titanium is because of how it disrupts your electrical frequency. You are an electrical being, okay? So when you stick something like that so close to your brain, it's going to affect you. Um, zirconia, um, not too many people do them, so it may be a little more cumbersome to find somebody that does a zirconia implant, but I promise you it would be well worth the investment. If that um, infected tooth is not removed properly, believe it or not, it leaves what's called a cavitation site. I know that's like a strange word, but a cavitation is a hole in the bone that can't be detected visually. So what happens is the, it's a disease process in which the lack of the blood supply to an area of bone resulted in a hollowed out portion of the jawbone and it causes necrotic or dead bone. So even just getting an injection with something called epinephrine can actually cause some of your bone cells to die. So my recommendation would be, would be to use an epinephrine-free anesthetic like Carbocaine. But most people have cavitation sites even from uh, wisdom teeth extraction. So what's so important in having that tooth removed by a biological dentist is that they actually remove an additional millimeter of the dead bone and the tissue in the socket. They're also going to use the carbocaine. Um, they have different ways of treating it, like through platelet therapy, PRP, um, high doses of vitamin C or even IV therapy not traveling after you get the tooth pulled and acupressure. Um, how I even found out about root canals, believe it or not, because I, I was practicing for 10 years before I even started to, to look into any of this myself, is that my husband had had a root canal before we got married. And then um, about, I think it was in 2010, he started to get this lymph gland on the right side that just blew up. It just kept getting, you know, huge and it would hurt. And I just felt prompted in my spirit to go and look up root canals. And he had had a root canal and tooth number 30, which is on the right side. And that's when I started to find Dr. Mercola's information about root canals. And I just knew that that was the source of his problem. So we did go to a biological dentist, Dr. Ray Bem, which he has since passed on. But um, when he got in there, 
even though this did not show on the x-ray, there was all, it was all like black, looked like oil down in there. So they immediately sent him to get an IV right after he got that removed. And he now has the bridge. So that's our story with that. Um, Dr. Joseph Isels, he was a German cancer doctor. He practiced up until 1987. He would not even touch a cancer patient unless they actually had their root canal teeth removed. He wouldn't even work with them. Um, another issue that really wreaks havoc on people's health is gum disease. Um, most people have heard about gingivitis, but I really want to discuss the difference between gingivitis and periodontal disease because, again, there's all of this bacteria in your mouth and um, having it wreak havoc is really um, something that we need to take control of. Over. We can change our oral care products, we can remove the mercury, um, you know, get rid of the root canal teeth, but also your home care. You really need to be making sure that your gums are healthy. So having gingivitis um, actually really affects your heart. It can cause heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, um, pancreatic cancer, Alzheimer's. Um, you know, again, you got to think about how if there's a disease in one part of your mouth, there's not like a magic fence in your body. So it is going to travel. But you can see the difference here in the tissue. The tissue is nice and pink, it's firm. And then look at the margins. This is called marginal gingivitis. So gingivitis means that your gums are inflamed, but your bone is healthy. So look at the difference here. This is my little ruler that I would use to measure the space between your tooth and your gum called a pocket. So when the pocket is tight and healthy, you can see how you can barely get in here. It's a one, two, or a three. Once it gets past to four and you're starting to get five, sixes, you've got bone loss here. Bone does not grow back, okay? You don't just grow your bone back. Um, you can stop the disease, we can get you to remission, but you won't stay in remission unless you're really doing everything that you should be doing. And that means getting your cleanings regularly, supporting your overall health with supplements, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. This is actually a patient of mine. Um, this gray that you see here, this is the bone. Okay, your bone should be up here. Now you see these big old boulders, almost Christmas tree looking things hanging off the side of the teeth. Look at that. That's all tartar underneath the gum. So this is anaerobic bacteria, which is eating away. It's like parasites eating away at the bone. So again, does not hurt until the last stage when your teeth are ready to come out. So that's why you don't want to wait on that. And yes, I have actually cleaned somebody way worse than this. This is horrible, but this happens all the time. Okay. So you do not ever want to look like this. This is all plaque and calculus. Um, very diseased tissue here. So women, especially with gum disease, need to watch out for cancer. It can cause, again, the breast cancer, esophageal cancer, gallbladder cancer. Um, and it just increases your overall risk of cancer overall. So again, the diabetes is something that um, people don't realize can be caused from your, your mouth. Heart attacks, the strokes. In fact, they did, um, I think it was Maybe 15 years ago, I actually used to hand this study out to my patients where they had biopsied stroke victims' arteries. 40%, 40% of the bacteria that was clogging their arteries came from their mouth. So what does that tell you? That's pretty scary. Again, uh, pancreatic cancer, Alzheimer's, and dementia. These are all things that can happen with that nasty bacteria in your mouth. So this is something we do in my office. It's called the Hain test. We actually culture the bacteria and we send it off to a lab because it's truly the only way that we're going to know what we're looking at because there's 11 bacteria that specifically cause the periodontal disease. This was actually a 24-year-old female. Out of the 10, I'm sorry, out of the 11, she had 10, which is extremely high for somebody her age. Unfortunately, she did not follow through with treatment, so... If she doesn't get this taken care of, she won't have teeth in another 10 years. This is something else I hand out to my patients. It's the actual bacterium that we are screening for in that pain test so they can see, oh, geez, if I have this bacteria, it's linked to colorectal cancer. So we definitely address the root cause of disease in my office. Um, 
Vitamin therapy for gum disease. Science has shown that if you have gum disease, you're actually lacking CoQ10 in your body. So supplementing with CoQ10 is really huge. In fact, um, they found that diseased gum tissue had less CoQ10 than normal tissue. Okay, so if you give your body what it needs, it's always going to try and heal itself. So what the CoQ10 does is it actually helps your body fight off that bacteria on a microcellular level. Oh, uh, another thing on the CoQ10, if you take a statin drug, it's actually robbing it from your body, so you're supposed to be giving that back into your system and supplementing, so that's very important. Vitamin C. I can't even tell you how many times I see people are actually lacking vitamin C in their body. Low levels of scurvy. Okay, so vitamin C is a very powerful antioxidant. It helps uh, improve your collagen production. That's what makes you stay youthful. Um, it actually has been proven to improve the resistance of gingival tissue um, by this bacteria. So that's why it's so important. Vitamin B complex. That actually helps prevent the irritation of the inside and outside of the mouth. Um, sometimes people get like those cracked corners of the mouth. That can be a vitamin deficiency. Um, inflammation of the tongue, again, lack of vitamin B. So it really helps with wound healing. So that's a really great benefit of vitamin B. Vitamin D, again, I said your teeth are the windows to your bones. So making sure that you get the right amount of vitamin D, which the only way to do that is truly to get a blood test. But, um, you know, things like smoking and having uncontrolled diabetes definitely um, are lacking vitamin D. So all of these things need to be addressed so that you can treat your body holistically. I love pomegranate. Pomegranate reduces dental plaque microorganisms. It can help reduce the chance of developing tooth decay and gum disease. It can curb overall inflammation, may improve circulation, helps tremendously with your heart, your blood vessels. Um, some people even use pomegranate for the flu. Um, really helps with um, prostate cancer, obesity, weight loss. So that's why I recommend pomegranate. Probiotics are also essential because your gut health, that is where your immune system is, is in your gut. So making sure that you keep your um, gut healthy. Um, you have actually 700 kinds, more than 700 kinds of bacteria in your mouth. Some are helpful, some are harmful. Um, but you want to make sure that your microbiome stays intact, which is why you can't use something called chlorohexidine gluconate or Paradex long term because what it does is it kills all the bacteria in your mouth. That's why I love colloidal silver because colloidal silver is only ever going to kill the harmful bacteria while it maintains the good bacteria. So it does not disrupt that good microbiome in your mouth, the healthy flora. So probiotics are very necessary to help your immune system stay healthy. The other thing is the EPA, DHA. This supports cardiovascular and health and your circulation. So um, really helps in periodontal disease and can actually, according to the Journal of Dental Research, uh, can help decrease those pockets I talked about earlier. So it can help decrease the, the fours, fives, and sixes and hopefully get them back to twos and threes. Um, all of these vitamins can be found in my Perio pack, which it's the only one on the market that's actually geared towards gum and heart health. I used to have to sit there and write out all of these vitamins for my patients. Now I just say, go take this. It's everything that you need. Um, I mentioned earlier how colloidal silver kills just the bad bacteria. It was actually used in World War I. Um, really helped with infections prior to mainstream antibiotics coming about. It's antibacterial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, anti-parasitic, antifungal, and it aids in wound healing. So hospitals, diabetic wound care centers use silver for its healing um, properties. Also NASA and commercial airlines use it in their, their water supply. So these are my products. I have a mint and a cinnamon. You can find them on my website, www.simplysilvermouthwash.com. You can find me on Amazon. 
Um, I'm the only mouthwash on the market that actually contains something called raw croton lechulary sap. It's from Peru's Dragon Tree. It's also called Dragon's Blood. Um, and that's because the sap is like a reddish brownish color. If you were to cut yourself and put the dragon's blood directly on your skin, it's a natural coagulant. So it acts like a band-aid because it stops bleeding. So it's naturally antibacterial, antiviral. It's known to kill tumor cells. It's even approved by the FDA as an anti-diarrheal. Um, so my mouthwash also contains the CoQ10, which we talked about earlier, black walnut hull, which helps remineralize enamel. In fact, my husband had decay underneath the crown. Um, you know, typically you'd have to cut that crown off, drill out the new decay, re-impress for a new crown, um, you know, time ex time and uh, expensive as well. So we had him do the mouthwash about two, three times a day. Within 90 days, that tooth was hard as a rock. So, you know, all those natural, wonderful organic minerals help to remineralize your, your, uh, your teeth. My toothpaste. Um, you know, people think that they have to have all these abrasive ingredients in there to make your teeth white, but you really want to be using something that is not abrasive. You can go online and look up the RDA chart of abrasiveness. It lets you know how abrasive your toothpaste is. Anything over a 70 is considered somewhat abrasive. So even Sensodyne is between a 72 and a 79. Crest Pro Health is between a 146 and a 150, and some of your whitening toothpaste are around 200. So this is going to create sensitivity by opening up these little tiny tubules that you have in your root surface. So every time you take a breath or have something cold, you're going to feel it when those little tiny tubules are opened. But baking soda is only a 7 on the scale. So my toothpaste is a 49, which I'm in the top 15 of the least abrasive toothpaste on the market. So I also have something called neem in there, which is just wonderful for your teeth and receding gums. Um, you can go onto my YouTube channel, check out my videos on how to brush, how to floss, how to use the water pick so you're not doing it improperly. And then I also have a brush spray. Um, Amazon took it off because I had the word hand sanitizer in there. And right now I'm I'm actually recording this while the uh, quarantine is going on for coronavirus. So um, unfortunately, they gated my Simply Silver breast spray because I had the word hand sanitizer in there. So God forbid you use a natural product. But colloidal silver, you know, kills bacteria, kills viruses, kills germs. So you can use my spray to kill bad breath. And also, you know, when you go into a restaurant, you can uh, spray the salt and pepper shakers, your grocery carts. Um, I personally don't like to use commercial hand sanitizers because it can actually disrupt your endocrine system and especially your thyroid again. So getting back to that autoimmune issue that so many people are dealing with. I hope that you were able to take at least one nugget of truth out of this webinar. You know, I really want people to be their own health advocate. I want you to do your own research, make an informed decision. Um, I think it's so important that you don't just do what someone tells you to do, but it's your body, you know? So I would just encourage you that um, not to give in to peer pressure, but to make your own decision. And I love to hear from you. You can reach out and email me at heather at simplysilvermouthwash.com. Shoot me an email. Go to my Facebook page. Let me know what kind of topics you'd like me to talk about more. And we can look forward to having some more time together. Thanks so much and hope everyone stays safe and healthy.